Annyeonghaseyo. Good evening. Hello. Thank you to everyone in the audience here, and hello to everyone on the live stream. We really appreciate you joining us, no matter what time of day or night it might be for you. Tonight, I have the distinct honor of interviewing a few of our council members who have traveled so far to be with us. These folks are leaders in their industry, they are visionaries, and they are helping their companies and their customers usher in the future. So I'm gonna bring them on stage and then we will have them each share a little bit more about themselves and what their companies are doing. So first, we have Kamal Yusfi with Swisscom Blockchain. Thank you, Kamal. And next, we have Friedrich Kurtz with Deutsche Telekom. All right, again, thank you both so much for coming all this way. We really appreciate it. And we are so excited to welcome you both to the Hedera Governing Council. Thanks for having us. Absolutely. Kamal, um, to start, why don't you just give us a little bit of background on yourself and your role at Swisscom Blockchain. For sure. Hi, everyone. <clears throat> Kamal Yusfi is my name, and I'm leading Enterprise Blockchain Advisory within Swisscom Blockchain. Um, Swisscom Blockchain is a subsidiary of Swisscom, the Swiss national telco operator and largest ICT infrastructure within Switzerland. Um, Swisscom Blockchain is a kind of uh, one-stop uh, shop for blockchain, which offers a pack of um, advanced solutions and services to ensure uh, a secure implementation of uh, different blockchain use cases across the industries. Great, thank you. And Friedrich, similarly, if you can share your role and what you do with DT. Sure, thanks for having us here. Thank you, everybody. So my name is Friedrich Kurz. I'm heading the Global Partnership Program at Deutsche Telekom T-Labs in Berlin. I got a background as an IT and IP lawyer, as my fellow council members here as well, and um, <laughs> spent half of my career in court and the other half are trying to build up partnerships. So I'm very excited to be here. Good, good. So Kamal, Swisscom Blockchain is a subsidiary of Swisscom. Why did the company think it was so important to stand up an organization specifically focused on blockchain and distributed ledgers? Well, um, building a connected world between individuals and corporates has been always and still being uh, the preview number one within Swisscom. And if you look at blockchain or distributed general in, in gen or distributed ledger technologies in general, it has the potential to enable new business models and uh, create new ecosystems across almost all industries. And on the other hand, um, ensure a valuable implementation of blockchain use cases and solutions um, requires deep understanding of technology, um, professionalism in business advisory, and also a dedicated team who, who's gonna focus on the development and evaluating the use cases. Um, Swisscom decided to create a subsidiary or um, uh, a new company within Swisscom to focus on that and bring all these aspects and the required skill set to cover all these aspects together. So that's why they created Swisscom Blockchain. Good, and so how do you work with, it, with the other groups within Swisscom? Yeah, <clears throat> I mean, Swisscom is a very big company uh, with all, more than um, 23,000 employees. Um, in our, uh, we, 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 we strongly believe in uh, collaboration and cooperation, not only across the different departments and departments and business units, but also across the individuals. So that's why we always create a kind of joint task force um, across all the departments and business units to set up a cross-functional team and make sure that the project team 
has the needed skill set to transform the projects uh, successfully. Thank you. Friedrich, you advise uh, DT and your customers on uses of DLT. What is most interesting to you these days? So this is right. So very interesting for us is now that the hype is gone around cryptocurrencies and that the dust settles. We see which companies and organizations really did do work and build something meaningful. And I think Hedera Hashcraft, you definitely did that. <laughs> and uh, the other, uh, others who only were in speculative mode here. So, and this is very good to see that now we, we get a little bit more visibility on which technology is apl applicable and which one is not. And are you seeing some consistent you know, um, challenges to adoption or questions to adoption? Absolutely. So we made a survey uh, one and a half years ago under our dear customers, business customers, and we saw a lot of uncertainty regarding the underlying technologies. Nobody knew exactly on which blockchain, DLT, where shall I build it, how could it work, what is a fork, what the hell happens to my customer data if it happens. So and uh, this is of course something what really, really slowed down also the application of, of uh, DLTs in the space, and, but we are on it. So we are looking in different models and alternatives very much here also in Hedera, but also trying to find interoperability solutions. Great, and that brings up a good point. You know, we have talked a little bit, Kamal, about um, public and private ledgers and how people are thinking about bringing those two things together. Can you share a little bit with our audience um, some of the instances where you're seeing this happen? Yeah, for sure. I mean, <clears throat> within Swisscom, uh, in general, we are committed to equip uh, enterprise and corporate customers with uh, uh, the crypto infrastructure. And we have been facing these challenges where different clients were uh, interested in different blockchain platforms. And uh, some of the more public blockchain platforms, some of the more private ones, and some other corporates were interested more in hybrid solutions like hybrid blockchain platforms. And um, that's why we started thinking about creating a new layer where we can develop um, an, a kind of orchestration layer between all the different blockchain platforms and get them to communicate and synchronize each other. So I'm glad that you mentioned the same experience in Germany as well. Friedrich, do you want to elaborate a little bit on your experiences here too? Absolutely, so glad to do this. So we looked into this a little bit uh, deeper also and we saw that uh, the one of the underlying problems is that you has, have this uncertainty on the one side, and the on the other side, you want to build something meaningful towards your customer. So as a developer, usually you don't have the time to consider all the time on which computer platform are you building stuff. And I, s I think this is a parallel now to the, to the world of DLTs, that uh, this uncertainty can't happen. I mean, you don't have the time to do it, otherwise you are not going to go to market anyway soon. So, and this is why I'm so excited also about Hedera's approach to this problem, because this is now one of the few pro uh, models where you can really have something as reliable and trustful and also powerful. Great. Kamal, you previously shared a story with me um, about a project that you are working on within your group around international remittances. And I think for anyone who has family or friends around the world, that's something that you know probably a lot of us have experienced. How do you send money cross-border without um, you know, Western Union or MoneyGram or someone else taking a large chunk of that? Um, so can you share a little bit with our audience how you see DLT playing a role in um, these international remittances going forward? For sure. I mean, as probably you know, uh, the international remittance is one of the, uh, the biggest uh, challenges we had or we have been facing all the time in terms of uh, transparency, transaction fees, and uh, security. And during our, um, um, or during the blockchain symposium in the Middle East, uh, especially in Sultanate of Amman, we have been conducting different workshops with uh, different ministries and some representatives from the government 
and they have been addressing different issues and they were seeking for solutions uh, leverage, by leveraging the technology and focusing on uh, distributed ledger technologies. <coughs> Sorry. And um, we have been analyzing the, inter uh, the uh, international remittance in Oman and the use case is very simple. In this country, more than 50% are guest workers. So they are coming from uh, India, Pakistan, and other countries, and they work in Sultanate of Oman and try to help their friends, families, relatives by sending money back. And the problem is, in their home countries, they still suffering under, under the lake of the infrastructure. So the most used method to transfer money there was like, used the union um, and MoneyGram. And sometimes the transaction fees are up to 15%, which is huge. Yeah. And that's why we started on working on the international remittance use case, uh, which was designed and developed um, by uh, addressing the potential of blockchain-driven payments and also addressing the, the challenges involving the transaction speed transparency and the huge uh, transaction costs associated with cross-border payments. And uh, very good news, last week we managed to uh, successfully uh, perform a transaction to India within less than two minutes and less than uh, 50 basis points. So with other words, like uh, less than 1% transaction fee or half. Yeah, that's very exciting and a very interesting application that has a lot of impact on a lot of people, potentially. It covers also a human aspect, so that's the beautiful thing in it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And Friedrich, we have talked a little bit about um, call data records, which um, for those of us in the audience who are not familiar with that terminology, maybe you can share a little bit about what that means, why that's so important for your industry, and um, maybe a little bit about how antiquated that process is today. So happy to do this. So call data records are basically the metadata of each call. And the metadata of each call are then uh, uh, written to a file, and that's called CDR. And in this CDR, you see the callee, the caller, and also the length and duration. So, and the fun part of it is like the many, many te telecom providers in the world, each and every one has its own format to do this, believe it or not. So, it's hard, it, there's no standard, no standard setting organization is on it, so it's really um, uh, something what then only works with people in the middle of it that extract the data from the one CDR and from the other CDR and match it. So, and because this is such an anti antique uh, uh, way to do it, there's a lot of opportunity for fraud also and for mistakes. And uh, this is actually a huge problem in the industry and there's a lot of money that is lost by this. And this is one of the points where we see uh, distributed ledger technology as something what has to be adopted very fast, very quickly. And I think you gave the example of, you know, if I'm roaming here in Korea, then my provider has to somehow reconcile that with you know, the Korean telecom um, that is providing the service here. So um, for those of us traveling quite a bit, I'm sure we, we don't see that in the back end, but you have to deal with that. Right, right, <laughs> right. With the pen and paper process, basically, right? The agreements <laughs> that are underwritten, so it's amazing. Wow, maybe some squirrels in the background as well. Um, you know, now it's one thing, um, both of you have, have joined the council, it's certainly one thing to be using distributed ledgers and to be thinking about how to apply that to your business. It's quite another thing to actually say, I want to have a role and a voice in a governing council for a public ledger. Um, Kamal, maybe you can share a little bit about why you, you chose to do that and why Swisscom is interested in having a seat at the table. Um, well, as part of our commitment in the DLT uh, era, we are supporting um, effective and uh, secure implementation of blockchain use cases, and we also support blockchain use cases that demonstrate the value proposition of the underlying technology. And we have been always looking in for a blockchain platform 
which implements the most relevant aspects of a blockchain platform, which are speed, fairness, security, and scalability. And I'm really happy and proud to be part of the governing council so that I can help in the, by, by sharing my experience, by sharing industry insights, and drive to get a product development towards uh, the future. Great. And Friedrich, why did um, DT decide that this was you know, something where, again, you wanted to have a seat at the table? Right, so we had two, two drivers, basically. The initial one was we wanted to have a say in the technical development and the technical roadmap. This is also what my dear colleague from Berlin already said in the video. This was one part, but the other part uh, that has uh, then gained also on, on way is like sitting together with those council members and discussing really interesting stuff. And so I remember our initial meeting yesterday and it was like really very interesting how so much expertise at one table rolls up the sleeves and goes to, to work and actually does something meaningful. So and this is something very, very exciting. Good, good. Um, and, you know, there are a number of committees that will um, be organized and, and manage different parts of the governance. So um, I think Scott talked a little bit about, you know, technical committee, business committees, um, legal, finance, marketing. Um, Friedrich, which committees in particular are you and your colleagues at DT interested in serving on? Actually, I find each and every committee fascinating. Perfect. Really. Yeah. You sign you up for all of them. <laughs> but no, I can't. <laughs> so in the end, I have to make a decision. And of course, the legal and regulatory comes, comes uh, handy. But uh, I mean, also the technical committee and also the membership committee, every one of those is very interesting for us. And Kamal, how about you and your colleagues? Where do you see yourselves participating? Well, first of all, I'm going to speak for myself. So <laughs> I already committed myself to be part of the technology committee. Um, as uh, I would like to, to see the product development and um, actively uh, contribute to uh, shipping up the future. Um, however, um, I committed myself as well to share the industry insights coming from Switzerland to uh, ensure or make sure that Hedera Hashgraph uh, is going to address the business needs. Good, good. Well, we're glad to see such active participation already from some of our initial council members. Um, again, we want to thank you both so much for coming all the way to Seoul. Again, to our folks on the live stream, thank you for joining us. Um, and yes, our, our gratitude and our appreciation. Um, let's give our panelists a big round of applause.